what are the odds that he does not expect to get any of these things that he's asking for? He's expecting some sort of an out of court settlement. That's what are the what are the odds that that's what he's doing is uh is just going for a payday because at the end of the day you it's know, not a class action so I mean sure I mean that could possibly be and if they were like you know can we give you like thirty thousand dollars and you to make our go stupid away, lawsuit go away yeah um it would be worth their while to do it and that could possibly be you well know, I mean he six was six months to a year salary in one whack and 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 he was threatening that like look we can make this extra expensive for you. Yeah, when you said that, that's when it first like dinged, and I was like, "Hold on now, did yeah. you make it expensive for them, or are you trying to, you know, fix Extort the rent a, system for retail?" The, I, uh, I, I here's the thing: if he wasn't such a pompous asshole about it, he might have gotten that settlement. But it's pretty clear that, like. Part of it may be that he wants a settlement. I, I, I don't doubt if, if there was if it was of enough character that he'd take a settlement. But he's so pompous and self righteous about this. I get the feeling that these lawyers and especially their clients are like, No, we're taking this all the way because we know we're going to beat the absolute shit out of him. Like I, I was I was thinking about this when I was I was talking about it on the way back from work in my car. And I was, I was trying to think of a way to describe this lawsuit. You remember during the 90s when MMA, like, you know, UFC was like the Wild West. It was basically legalized street fighting where these Joe Blows off the street could come off into MMA, come into to UFC and have these almost no holds barred matches with professional fighters. That's, yeah. that's what this is. Some Joe Blow with a with a with a beer belly decides he's going to go fight a professional fighter, and then we all get to watch as his shit gets kicked in and he's sent home in a stretcher. And and instead of just taking his licks, he 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 does he he was talking shit the whole time and giving the middle finger to to the lawyers on his way in the door, basically. Oh well rule seven point one doesn't apply to me. I'm clearly above that. So like that that's the that's the other thing that like maybe he would take a settlement maybe he was gearing for a settlement maybe he thought he could bar them into a second a settlement but he was acting so holier than thou I I don't think he'd ever get a settlement is the problem so I don't know at the end of the day you know it's a when you calculate lawyer fees in a situation like that the um it ends up being what the bottom line. Well, I mean, see, it, 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 it really could cost him a whole lot of money to defeat him on principle because those lawyers are getting, they have my salaries and theory, getting, getting paid by the hour too. My theory with how frivolous this is and how loudly they've been protesting to the court how frivolous it is that if, if they're going to fee shift on him. Court, clearly this was completely frivolous, a waste of everyone's time, a waste of the lawyer fees involved. We want fee shifting. We want sanctions for fee shifting. I, I don't know what you have to say on that puzzle, but I just, I have no pity. You know, if you want, like, if, if, if you're going to make those arguments, I think it just exposes how sad and pathetic you are as a litigant, and the court should not even have any pity on you for that. Well, the more that you get into it, the more sense it makes that, yeah, he's just uh He's trying to be as abrasive and annoying as possible. He thinks he's the hero of the day. That's what it is. He, he thinks he's the white knight coming to save everybody, so he doesn't need to play by the rules. He's the hero. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting that. I'm getting a whole lot more, um, because you don't make mistakes like that on purpose. You can only screw up so bad on accident. Mm -hmm. You know, after a certain point, it's intentional. You know, and there's a, there's a lot of things in that that are just intentionally abrasive that he knows he's not going to get. You know, that, uh, you know, I mean, he doesn't, he's not trying to win the, he's not trying to win discovery. He's not trying to make progress, you know, that's actually going to serve any purposes. He is just looking for it to get thrown out. I mean. So he can go back to YouTube and say, look, I tried, but the court system's corrupt. Possibly so, yeah. That wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility of probably what's going to happen. You know, is make it so outrageous, you know, and then uh, 
and well, then play the victim the, uh, on it. That's possible too. But I'm still I'm still leaning towards I'm still leaning towards he was hoping for a settlement. Which either way it mm-hmm. would be, you know, the it's gonna be a payout whether it's an actual settlement or whether it's like a really awesome YouTube views because you know when he gets kicked out they're gonna keep watching, you know, so it, part of it's performative art, part part of it is just hoping like hell that he does. Or a little of both. Like yeah, the yeah, best outcome for him is I got my settlement, look I can do this for you guys, and he can, you know, build on the rep. He got a cash payout, and he can go back to YouTube and be like, "Look, I'm the hero you all need." But he's not thinking about if uh, if they do that reversal of fees. He needs to do some math on um, on how much real corporate lawyers bill per right. hour, yeah. um, because I mean that could be that could definitely throw a a wrench in his monkey, monkey works. And while I'm not a fan of him getting a settlement for frivolous lawsuits or at being able to monetize bullshit on YouTube, right. I'm not a fan of either one of those. I definitely would hate to see the, the boomerang come back on him and it, yeah. because it's not just him, you know, he's got, he's got a family, you know, and different things that are going to suffer because of this decision if it backfires on him. And that's not cool, but, yeah. It is what it is. I don't get to live his life and make his decisions. Well, I think, and I think that's, that's part risk of the, versus reward. I guess it is. And I think that's part of the problem with this whole cult mindset is is I, I think that, you know, it, it's somewhere in between both of what we're thinking because part of it is definitely, he, you know, he might be gunning for a settlement or doesn't think that he's going to get. So he's just trying to be as agri- abrasive and as grating as possible to try and push them into a corner but the other half of it is that sort of cult mindset that you see with a lot of these meme stocks where um, he, he, he feels like he's the hero and he can do no wrong. I am the just individual come to save the retail investors and all these people are just the corrupt bad guys in my you know hero's journey to proving that I was the good guy all along. You know, so... I think that's where a lot of this arrogance comes from. A, he thinks if he can be a brace, if he can get a settlement, and B, I'm the hero, so obviously I'm right no matter what I do. Well, I don't know that I would want to be um, filming a YouTube video to prove how right that I was because I was victimized by the system um, after my house was taken and yeah. I had to live in a motel. I'm not sure that's a win. Well, I, I like, but that they never, if, nobody ever thinks about that in a cult. No, nobody ever thinks about that. You know, how many people the day, in the cult of Scientology think about the the compound in California? <laughs> well, I guess that's a point. That's definitely a point. It just, uh, I don't know. I tend to think about what are, how you know, what are the potential downsides? Mm-hmm, I've had mm-hmm. a lot of stuff blow up in my face. Yeah, because you're a reasonable you know? person. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and I'm like, how many ways can this uh, turn around and bite me in the ass? You know, and, and I don't understand why. Well, but... He's probably just going for a settlement, and just like a lot of these folks that go for the go for the gold, the high risk, mm-hmm. you know, lottery ticket plays, you know that he's just shooting his shot. And um, Lambos or food stamps, I guess, is what it's going to be. I seriously doubt that they could go through that information in in a manner that would be productive. I just that's why I don't think his in, I don't think he has any intention of getting that data because it doesn't make sense. He doesn't have any intention of the, uh, getting the data. He just has an intention of running up the cost to force a settlement. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's to me, that's where all the signs point. But that mm. you know, I don't know. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, like it makes sense to me because why would you feel as a pro se litigant you would be able to parse this information? You're just trying to get the court to force them to give you stuff that would be expensive for them to. Which, which brings us back to the abusive process. He's, he's using the court as a bludgeoning stick to get money from people. That's not, the, that's not what the intent was with the... Uh, with the with, uh, they, yeah, they need to just go ahead and shut that down. And, uh, well, um, I, he, well, we've still got a li- one more document to go, and there's only a couple things out of it. But I, 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 don't, I don't think that any of this will actually be ruled on right away because it's the 29th right now so by the time the court comes back into session it'll be the first of january and that'll be a monday 
I don't know if they are closed for New Year's. They might be. Um, the 8th is the next following Monday. So you got a week. I don't think the court's going to rule on this. They're just going to wait for the reply for a motion to dismiss and then wait to see if Al responds to whatever is responded to here and just rule on the papers on a motion to dismiss. And if the court rules in favor of the motion to dismiss, well, we don't have to discuss about file preservation now, do we? <laughs>